I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. The question is, how can I witness something invisible? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Atif Dost. 9th October 2021, 3rd Rabiul Awwal. The title is Cracking the Kaaba Code Gravity, Kaaba, As Safa, and Al Marwa. To better understand, I strongly recommend the series Cracking the Kaaba Code. The links are available in the description below. So, session roadmap. First, I'll explain the two different ways of thinking, followed by how to start the labs. Next, I'll explain gravity. Finally, why Allah chose gravity for his house. So let's begin. Outlook number one, chapter two, Al-Baqarah 55. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَن نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ and when you said, O oh Musa, we will never believe you until we see Allah openly, overtly, frankly, publicly. These people believe in what they can verify visually. So their motto is seeing is believing. In other words, if I cannot see something, hear, touch, smell, taste, or feel, then it doesn't exist. So they depend on their senses. Outlook number two, chapter two, Al-Baqarah two, three, and four. kitabu <laughs> وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنْزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنْزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ That book has no doubt in it. Guidance for conscious, mindful. They believe with the invisible. al ghaib they believe with the invisible, absent, unseen, and established prayer, and they spend from the sustenance we provided them. And they believe with what is revealed to you and what is revealed before you, and they are sure about the hereafter. Yuqinun, they have yaqeen, surety. Neither hereafter is reachable, nor I can see the invisible God. Nevertheless, the mindful people believe in more than what meets the eyes. These are two opposing outlooks and a reason for misunderstanding. Therefore, my intention is to bridge that gap. Chapter 35, Fatir. 38. Indeed, Allah is the knower of invisible, absent, unseen, of the skies and the earth. He surely has knowledge of the nature's origin. Now here, Allah himself is an alim, a learned one, of an invisible, unseen properties of the skies and the earth. Now I have got something to work with, the skies. So what is invisible or absent in a very physical, visible sky? To answer that, I'll continue from my last presentation, Symbols, As-Safa, and Al-Marwa. How to start the laps between Safa and Marwa. In the background of this picture is Safa. And the signboard reads, Badayat safa meaning Safa start, Shuru Safa. The key word to remember is Badaya, meaning start. 
After finishing the seven loops around the Kaaba, a pilgrim walks towards Safa, declaring this. Inna Safa wal Marwata min Sha'a Indeed, the Safa and the Marwa, Marwata are from the symbols of Allah. The pilgrim climbs up the slope, feeling the gravity after reaching the signboard. He or she proclaims this. Abda'u bima bada Allahu bihi, meaning, I begin with what Allah has begun with it. And the first lap begins. The pilgrim continues to climb up, then turns around and goes downhill, gaining speed with the gravity. So what does the proclamation mean? And what was started with this? Meaning of the word. So the key word is bada'a. And it means to begin, to start or to originate. The word Badaya on the signboard is derived from the word Badaa, which means to start. So the signboard and the dictionary confirms each other. Next question, has the word Badaa occurred in the Quran? And it has 15 times in 14 unique references in over 70% of the references, the word start occurred with the word repeat. So what was started and still repeating? Here is a sample from the 14 references you just saw. Reference number one is Al-Quran 2764, who originates the creation, then repeats it and who gives you sustenance from the heaven and the earth? Is there a God with Allah? Say, bring your proof if you are truthful. Next, Al-Quran 10.34. Say, can anyone from your partners originate the creation? Then repeats it. Say, Allah originates the creation and then repeats it. So how are you deluded? Next, Al-Quran 29, 19, and 20. Did they not see how Allah begin the creation, then repeats it? Indeed, that is easy for Allah. Say, travel through the earth and see how Allah starts the cre creation so will Allah produce a later creation, for Allah has power over all things. So the creation is not a one-off fluke or accident, as some might claim. Allah rightfully claims his repeating creation. But why is he repeating the creation? Chapter 10, Yunus 4 Ilayhi marji'ukum jami'a wa'adallahi haqqa innahu yabda'ul khalqa thumma yu'iduhu liyajzi alladhina amanu wa'amilu s-salihati bil-qist wal-ladhina kafaru lahum sharabun min hamimin azabun alimun bima kanu yakfurun to him is your return, all of you. Promise of Allah is true. Surely he starts the creation, then he repeat he will repeat it, so that he may justly reward those who believe and corrected the deeds with installments. And those who reject, for them a drink from boiling liquid and a painful punishment with what they were rejecting. Point number one, to reward the good and the bad. That's the purpose of repeating, to show you the repetition in your life. So rest assured, it will be repeated again. You will come back to life. Just saying, 
I believe is not enough. It must be followed by the corrections of the deeds, meaning continuous improvement. How did Allah begin the creation? Chapter 21, Al-Anbiya 104. يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ Day that we roll up the skies like a scroll rolled up for books. Since we can't see the sky space rolling up because it's invisible, therefore this video will show you a star being shredded and rolled up like a scroll. Once you understand this, then we'll continue with this verse and explain how a star or a sun was created. So let's watch it. Please visit the second link under the video for further details. Now we'll continue where we left off, the same verse. And the verse explains the first creation. So let's continue. Kama badatna awwala khalqin nu'idu. Just like that, just like that spinning, we began the first creation. We repeat it. Here is an example by NASA how our sun was formed. The sun and the rest of the solar system form from a giant rotating cloud of gas and dust called a solar nebula about 4.5 billion years ago. As the nebula collapsed, because of its overwhelming gravity, it is spun faster and flattened into a disk. Most of the material was pulled towards the center to form our sun, which accounts for 99.8% of the mass of the entire solar system. Further continues. A promise binding upon us. We indeed, we are doing it. What does this statement mean? So in the light of the evidence, it is fair to say, I begin with the gravity because Allah started the creation with it. In Arabic, Abda'u bima bada Allahu bihi. So that's the meaning of this statement. So what is gravity? The story began with a gentleman named Isaac Newton. 
now we know him as Sir Isaac Newton over 300 years ago. He produced Newton's law of gravity to calculate the gravitational pull between the masses of two bodies. Because the Newtonian law was so accurate in calculating the gravity, the scientists used it to calculate the gravity in the solar system to predict precisely when Mercury should appear on the face of the sun. However, the problem was every time their prediction was slightly wrong by 43 arc seconds. So the calculation on the piece of paper did not match the observation. Being imaginative, a mathematician and an astronomer thought there must be something disturbing Mercury's orbit, and he called that something planet Vulcan. And if you Google it, is planet Vulcan real? The answer comes, Vulcan is a small hypothetical planet that was proposed to exist in an orbit between Mercury and the Sun. A mathematician hypothesized that peculiarities in Mercury's orbit were the result of another planet, which he named Vulcan. So the planet Vulcan didn't exist. Finally, they questioned Isaac Newton. In 1915, Albert Einstein theory knocked out the law. The theory of general relativity. Einstein's predict, Einstein predicted that celestial bodies does not exist in vacuum, emptiness of space, although invisible, yet he was able to claim. Why? Because through his equation, he was able to account for those missing 43 arc seconds. How did Einstein do that? He imagined the invisible space as a fabric called space-time. On it sits the sun, the moon, and the planets, bending and curving it. So he believed his imagination and pursued it, and finally produced the theory of general relativity. Hence the saying, Imagination is more important than knowledge. So which curve was he talking about? This is the curve as shown in this uh, simulation. In the center is the sun and is bending the space around it. And the planet is going around the sun because of this bend is just following the curvature. Now here is the Kaaba. During the flooding of 1941, this particular picture is important because it exposes the valley around the Kaaba, depicting the gravity well. So in the case of astronomy, the scientists conveniently believe in the deduced, inferred, unseen, invisible valleys. And when it's inconvenient, in the case of God, they say, show us the evidence. Well, this is the evidence. Fortunately, neither the science cares about their biases and ignorance, nor does the religion of Islam. If you ask me, this is where the gravity helps you cross that barrier of physical skies into an invisible realm of the skies. And it was all made possible due to our capacity to gain knowledge. With the help of knowledge, we can see or witness things that are invisible or absent. Similarly, believers infer or deduce the existence of an unseen God by discovering advanced concepts of gravity and astronomy at work in his house. This is the reason gravity is chosen 
as the primary fixture in the house of Allah. Why Allah chose gravity for his house? Still don't believe me? Have you noticed anything odd in this picture? The door of the Kaaba is mounted seven feet above the ground. Why? Because of the valley around the Kaaba depicting the sun's gravity well. Hence the water, when it rains, flows toward the center, deep end of the gravity well. Here it shows on the left the solar system or the planet going around the sun and that's what we do around the Kaaba, people orbiting the Kaaba. Since I have compared the solar system with the Kaaba in my previous slide, a valid question is, is Kaaba also a symbol? Chapter 2, Al-Baqarah 198 لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّن رَبِّكُمْ فَإِذَا فَضْتُمْ مِّنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشَعْرِ الْحَرَامِ وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَدَاكُمْ وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الضَّالِّينَ There is no blame on you for seeking the bounty of your Lord. Then when you gain quick space from Arafat, then remember Allah near the symbol of the forbidden. al mashar al-Haram The symbol of the forbidden and remember it just like you are guided and if you are from before this indeed from the people astray so just like no one can live inside our sun or a black hole as a symbol it is forbidden to live inside the Kaaba Whereas Safa and Marwa are also symbols, but not forbidden or haram. This is because we can travel to other planets in the solar system, like Mars. Hajrai Aswad, meaning the black stone. And the picture is shown on the right hand side. This is the east corner of the Kaaba where the black stone is mounted. It is the starting point for every Muslim to begin their circles or loops around the Kaaba, in total seven of them. On the left is the picture of a black hole, which is taken from NASA's website, and it is the first picture listed at the time of this video. Um, the black hole is actually made up of a very dense matter like a stone. Most probable reason why Kaaba is always covered in black. So the scientists wanted to find out what is in the center of a black hole sphere. They plugged in all the necessary numbers in the best equation available to them. And the result space-time is infinitely curved and infinitely dense at the center and that place is called singularity beyond this point the laws of physics breaks down as we know them and our understanding of the universe stops this is where we are at at this time singularity explained in the Quran chapter 112 al-ikhlas 1 2 3 and 4 qul huwa allahu ahad say he allah the god is one singular allahu samad allah the eternal 
to be eternal, he cannot have a start or an end. Lam yalid walam yulad. He neither begets, reproduces, nor was he born. The moment he reproduces or divides like a cell, he contradicts the first statement. He loses the singularity. If he is he if he has a date of birth, then he is not eternal. So he contradicts the second statement. If he died, then he is not eternal. Again, he contradicts the second statement. Walam yakullahu kufuan ahad. And there is not one comparable or equal to him. Because we accept him as eternal, always existed, and will remain forever. Therefore, he cannot be part of the created universe that has a date of birth of 13.8 billion years. So to tell a Muslim that something or someone is a God, that entity must fulfill these five conditions simultaneously. Gravity of the matter that is metaphorically speaking this time, here is what it takes to understand the skies as we know them. And this is not an exhaustive list. Point number one, research spanning thousands of years. Research that consumed not just human lives, but many human generations and nations. Point three, trillions of dollars spent just on astronomy, sending probes to the farthest edges of the solar system like Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, using many types of the telescopic technologies, the International Space Station and the Hubble Telescope, and countless satellites, collective effort of nations like Japan, Soviet Union, Russia, China, Europe, Canada, Australia, and the US. This is how we got this far. But the problem is Betal Jauza or Iptal Jauza or Yadal Jauza. What is that? explained in a tweet from a leading North American astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Betelgeuse is the star's common name, Arabic for armpit of the Great One. Its catalog name is Alpha Orionis. Here is the important part. Two thirds of all stars in the night sky with names have Arabic names, a homage to their stellar navigational skills 1,000 years ago, during the golden age of Islam. But the bigger problem is, now these are conundrums that needs to be solved. Number one, how did the Muslims acquire the detailed knowledge of the solar system the gravity assist maneuver, the invisible gravity well, and the black hole. How did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in just 23 years of prophetic life, has produced the accurate and expert knowledge to match the cumulative and collective understanding of astronomy of the 21st century without the help of technology, collective wealth, and efforts of the richest nations on the planet. Therefore, Michael Hart wrote a book, The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in the history. 
and he places Prophet Muhammad on top. Isaac Newton cuts it to the second position. But there is a correction. Historically and traditionally speaking, it was Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail. Peace be upon them both built the Kaaba. Historically speaking, just 1000 years ago, Muslims named 66% of the stars. However, thousands of years prior to that, our ancestors knew about the details of the solar system, the black hole, and the gravity assist maneuver. Our ancestors figured out the solar system, black hole, gravity assist maneuver, and the gravity well first, and named the stars later. Does it make sense? The reason I'm telling you all these historical facts is because there is no reasonable explanation except La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And I bear witness that there is no God except Allah. Chapter 41, Fusilat 53 and 54. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq. أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِي بِرَبِّكَ أَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ Soon we will show them our signs in the horizons and within their own selves until it is clear to them that it is the truth. Is it not enough about your Lord that he is witness to everything? Now here is the problem. أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ فِي مِرْيَةٍ مِنْ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِمْ أَلَا إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُحِيطٍ Beware, they are in doubt about meeting their Lord. Beware, He is the one who encompasses everything. So Qur'an is a living book of a living God for the living and unlike other religions quran proves its validity independent of the manipulated history of any given time houston do you copy now here are the coincidences chances you can pause and read the slides at your convenience. More luck, flukes, and accidents. We are a lucky bunch that we get everything right. References. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.